Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to teach our beautiful jack-o'-lantern that says boo, and it is so cute, I just love it, and we have a traceable for this, so I'm going to show you how that works. So this is a little bit different. Um, so we've got, you know, templates too, but also the traceable to me is actually a little bit easier and it provides a whole lot more detail. So with our kits, we give you the graphite paper and the traceable line art. So there's no detail that's lost there when you start to do your trace. So we're trying to evolve to this traceable thing as much as possible. Again, it is reusable. And so in the same way that a template's reusable, this is also reusable, so that's really helpful. And I'm gonna show you the process for how we do this. So I've just used simple scotch tape to go ahead and adhere the line art to the graphite paper. And then I did one more here to anchor it to the top. And then I make sure that my graphite paper is shiny side down. That will make sure that that transfers the image to the canvas. Just place it just like this. I also use a colored pencil to do the line art on top. That way I know where I've been and then I can confidently lift off and know where my lines are before I lift off completely. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So again, I'm just using a colored pencil here. Turquoise is a lovely color, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to trace all this out. And sometimes the scotch tape will sometimes lift a little bit, so I try to be really gentle with this process too as I'm doing my trace. And I do go ahead and try to keep a hand on it just to make sure that it doesn't shift, just in case. And also having it flat on your coffee table that also, or your dining room table, that also really helps too. All right, so just simple tracing now. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here and do this little bat. And then we also are including now like monogram letters and different words with our traceable kits. So we do all the really popular words. So you have lots of different options. So like we've got, you know, blessed, love, joy, gather, home, I'm trying to remember, welcome. I'm now working on the fall leaf behind here. See, in the past, a lot of this was, you can see how delicate some of these strokes are. And so we've never been able to get a template to be quite that delicate and small. And they were great for our public classes. It's not like the next best thing, but now we can kind of take it up a notch when you're working at home. We can give you better tools since you're working at home. Or when you come to our studio. <laughs> we have that here too. Both options. And I think you can see it in the camera. I know there's a little bit of a distance, but I think you can see how that turquoise line becomes really obvious, and so that definitely tells me where I've been. So that's really, really helpful. So I'm just doing this little rose now. Now we're down to the jack lantern.
is super exciting. Hello, welcome. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna do a little lift off here. It's looking really good. I think I just, oh, you know what? I forgot. It's not a really big deal because I'm actually going to paint over the top of this the solid color, but just to be absolutely complete, we'll go ahead and fill all of it in. So see, we have our beautiful transfer done now. So I'll go ahead and just lift off. And by the way, you can get several uses. I wouldn't let the paint, not the paint, I wouldn't let this scotch tape touch the back of the graphite paper because that will ruin it. But you can get several uses out of this graphite paper. So definitely reusable. Where am I going to put this? Let's see, I'm gonna do this right here. Ta-da, okay. Um, so yes, feel free to reuse that many times as much as you can. And of course the line art is definitely also reusable. You can use sections of it, you know, to be creative and mix it up a little bit too. So there's lots of different shapes there you can reuse as well. All right, so I've got my pencil line art here. Now there's a couple of options. You can absolutely just leave this the way it is if you like a softer look on the canvas. Um, or if you prefer more of the hard line edges, um, which I typically do, and especially for teaching, I like for people to see it really well. So I go ahead and follow up with a little bit of some Sharpie. So this is just my desired look for many reasons. I like the way it looks, but it also is much easier to see while I teach. And it's a great base for lettering too. You can still go over a little bit of Sharpie with some optional paint, or you can just let your lettering be done with the Sharpie. So, either way. And I know this looks like it's in reverse, but I promise when you get it at home, it all works out. And there's those little fall leaves. And see, th these are the little delicate branches and again, that's what I'm loving about the traceable. So it provides a way to have those come into play very easily. And then we have our lovely little bow shape here. And now we'll work on the jack-o'-lantern. Hello, Shine, welcome. <laughs> And hello to everybody else that I can't see. I know sometimes I can't see everybody. All right, now we're doing the outline on the jack lantern. Okay, so very exciting, we have our trace done now. All right, so we can actually start to paint. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about all the supplies we have for this because this all comes with our little kit here too. So we have, here it is. We have paint, very exciting paint. All right, and then it comes with brushes. So I've got, let's talk about our little brushes here. Sometimes they look different, but basically we've got our mama and then we have our little buddy and then we have our little bit. And that's how I refer to them. It's my little family of brushes here. And then I've got my bucket of water nearby to clean them off, give them a bath. And then you can have like a, a rag or even just paper towels nearby, either way. And then I do have plates. I just use real simple plates and then some paint. I've got some paint out, all ready to go. And then extra plates for mixing. So everything is all ready. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna start with the lightest colors first. I wanna make sure that they're very bright and vibrant and then they're not interrupted by any of the black paint. So I leave all the black paint to be done at the very end. So we will start with biggest brush. Where my little brushes go? There's that one. Okay, so here we go. Brush is just moist, so there's no excess water in the brush, so just moist. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start with a little dollop of the orange. Make sure y'all can see that. I also push in a dollop of the yellow. So I definitely add the yellow, here's why, because orange is typically very translucent. And so that little bit of yellow mixed in with that will, still looks orange, but it just brightens it up a little bit. And more importantly, it helps it cover much better on the canvas. So it makes it much easier to paint with. All right, so that will be my first coat on here. So when I start, I go ahead and start by holding the brush, you know, just like a pencil, pencil hold, and you get that line edge. And we'll go ahead and take this all the way around here. And at first you can see the transparency happening. But we'll correct that with how we hold the brush here in just a second. So in the beginning, that just happens mainly because of how I'm holding the brush and because I'm trying to get a line edge happening. And this is all going to be black, and because it's so translucent in the, in the first stage of this, I will actually just relax with the process and just go ahead and paint all the way through. So you can see I'm not really losing any detail. I still have that trace preserved. So I can just relax with the process and just paint all the way through here. And that's going to make it easier, too, to go over it with that second coat, too. So this is the first coat. Now. When I hold the brush more like a pencil, it does give me a heavier hand and it scrapes a lot of that paint off just as soon as you put it on. So what you wanna do for your second coat is you wanna make sure that you first get a nice layer of paint on one flat side of the brush. Then you wanna hold the brush parallel to the canvas. And then this will give you a light, gentle hand and it really allows that paint to rest on the surface. So you can already see a big difference there. So then I'll just take this all the way across. So now we're starting to see that really bright, vibrant orange. So you can see how the handle is parallel to the canvas. So that's definitely something that makes a really big difference, really helps that paint rest on the surface. So good job, we have the first layer done. Okay, so this is exciting. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush. I've been using my mama brush here. So I have my bucket of water. I'm gonna go ahead and push into the water. A Little bit of firm pressure that helps release that paint from the brush. And then I'll take it out and kind of do a little quick test. It's not quite clean yet. 
So again, firm pressure, circle it round and round and round. That helps release the paint. Let's check again. Okay, we're getting closer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little tap, tap, tap. It's not clean. Then I go ahead and do a quick little wipe with my paper towel or my rag here. And it's all ready to go. All right, so next step, so this is really dark. So again, we're waiting till the very end. So I'm gonna come in with this light rose. That's gonna be our next step. So again, the brush is just moist and I'm gonna go ahead and push into the white and a little tiny touch of the black. Push that in. So that gives me a little bit of some light gray and then I also wanna make sure I keep my white nearby and I will push that into the mix. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and push this into our rose. This will be the base color. And again, just some really pretty light gray because this, this rose will look like a white rose when we're done, but this is that first step. All right, and then kind of feather it out. So again, this is just a big dollop of white and then just a tiny little touch of the black is all you really need on this. All right, so first step. All right, next step on the rose, we wanna go ahead and come in with our little bit brush. And by the way, I did just go ahead and take that same brush and I just let it rest in the bucket of water. Um, it's really important to note that acrylic paint will set up and dry on you pretty quickly, sometimes in five minutes. Uh, so you do not want your brushes to harden. They will become sticks. That's no fun. <laughs> so, you know, we wanna protect our brushes. So just make sure if you can't get to it for just a second, make sure and at least let it rest in the water and not just sitting out somewhere on your plate. All right, so now we're going to be using a little bit and just pure white. That's our next step here. So a little bit brush and pure white. And then I go ahead and just do a little bit. It's like a little parentheses or a little bit of a half circle. And I spread this around here in a circular pattern. Take this all the way around. Just keep repeating that same pattern little half circles or tell your brain it's like making a parentheses. That's a really familiar stroke. Keep working that in a circular pattern all the way towards the center until you run out of room. All right, so you can already see how it's starting to evolve into that rose look. So now what I wanna do is I need the darkest color to come in and create a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to create a darker charcoal gray. So I'm gonna take that same little bit brush push into the black. So now I have that darker charcoal gray color. I have a medium, there we go. Okay, so a little bit charcoal gray. Let's do a little shadow spot right in the center. So it kind of looks like you make a little comma and then you lift off with a light hand. Hello! <laughs> Welcome, welcome, all these beautiful people from different lands. Some names I, I cannot pronounce. <laughs> and so, I, I, boy, <laughs> I can't even, but I do try to learn. I do try to take it, like, later in Google. Sometimes I still really mess up, but I'll try to take it later in Google and do the, you know how they have that, you can put it in and, and listen to Google pronounce it. And then I'll try to say it later and then people tell me, no, <laughs> you didn't do it right. But hey, at least I try. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm gonna do is little half circles around this little shape here. So this is that little bit of shadow that comes in. And there's my puppy dog. So it's a repeat of the same pattern that we just had, but it's a darker color now. So again, just little half circles here. And there's our beautiful rose. See, it's so simple. Okay, so again, let's recap on this. We did just a medium, real light heather gray in the beginning. That's our flat cover service. Color blocking is what I call that. Then we come in with the lightest white, 
and we do this little half circles or parentheses in a circular pattern all the way around, working in towards the center till you run out of room. Then you come in with the darkest color, which would, in this case would be that darker charcoal gray. Start with a little shadow spot in the center, looks like a little comma, and then just lift off with a light hand. And then we do just little, same repeat, same pattern, little half circles again, all the way around. So there's our fun little rose. All right, now we're going to make some sage green. So here's what's beautiful. I have my little bit brush already loaded up with some of this gray color that we have, and I have some green nearby. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that gray color and push into the green. And so that will start to make a really pretty, cool sage color. So, so pretty. All right, so there is our sage green. And so I'm gonna go ahead and push this into this little leaf here. So this leaf to me, it's like making the letter V. Do you see how that's, it's sideways, but it's like making the letter V. So then that's a great start. Great message to tell your brain to simplify the step. And then I just go ahead and fill into that shape. Try to use the side of the brush parallel to the canvas. That will help give you much better coverage over the surface. And then I've got another little leaf over here that is that sage green. Now I picked up a little bit of orange, so I went ahead and just wiped that off on my plate so I don't keep pushing that around onto the surface area. Go ahead and push into a little bit more sage there. And then I've got one more right in through here. And then we have this, I'm gonna lighten these up just a little bit, a little bit more white. And then I'll push these into these little shapes here. So again, just keeping the continuation of that beautiful sage green all the way through there. Hello, Cindy. Welcome. More pretty leaves. What have I got going on up there? I check my model every now and again just to make sure. And then little bitty branches are what's left. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that just the way it is. And then I'll add little touches of white accents here next. Oh, hello, Audrey, hello, Lo. <laughs> yes, happy Friday. <laughs> Audrey, I was thinking about you today because I hadn't seen you in a while. And I was like, I wonder how she's doing. And I see Lo all the time. I know how he's doing. He's always riding his bike and running. And <laughs> Being Superman out there. Making the rest of us when to get up off our rear ends <laughs> and go do something <laughs> instead of, you know, just eating more ice cream and brownies or something. Actually, I did not have any ice cream and brownies last night. I was tempted. But alas, I'm having a hard time fitting into all my pre-pandemic pants. <laughs> so I'm like, 
I gotta slow down. Uh, discipline, it's a drag. <laughs> All right, so now we have beautiful leaves. And I do want to come in and do some darker accents on the leaves, but I'll wait and do that next because now we have all of our beautiful black that will come in. So that is coming. This is exciting. All right, so here we go. I want to use my mama brush to start with, so I've got to take her out of the bath water here. Dry her off. She is now clean and just moist. It's very exciting. All right, so I go ahead and push into a little bit of just pure black paint. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my line work first up here. So I hold that brush like a pencil. So I let the thin line of this brush do a lot of the work for me. And then I'll just fill all this in. Real simple. I love this painting because it's really, really simple. And it works out well in class. That's the really cool thing I love about when we do have our classes again. I get that interaction with people to see how it's really making them feel in the moment, how the painting's really going. So learn a lot from our immediate feedback through those experiences with thousands and thousands of people. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Welcome. All right, so we're rounding the corner on this beautiful hat. Can y'all believe it's going to be Halloween soon? I know I'm super early, but... You know, we need something to look forward to. <laughs> so you just put up your Halloween decorations early. Okay, so I'm seeing, because I've done a lot of my line work, cut and work, I've been holding the brush a lot like this to begin with. So now what I wanna do is I wanna fill in a little bit. So I wanna make sure I've got a nice thick coat over the top. So I get a nice little layer of paint on one flat side of the brush. And then I do a little bit of texturing. So I do a little bit of this crisscross action kind of like making the letter X over and over again and then hold the flat side of the brush towards the canvas. So I'll work that in. That's a great second coat here. And then if it gets a little bit tinier in here for this brush to see it's becoming more challenging to maneuver in that space. Oh, thank you. You're so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. So you can switch to a smaller brush here and just kind of crisscross it back and forth. Do a little bit of that with the smaller brush and then this will help you maneuver a little bit more into these tinier spaces. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna grab another one. That other little buddy had a little bitty hair kind of going this way and that bummed me out a little bit because that could just really kind of swipe in and create a detail that I'm not real pleased with. So I'm going to change that one out. And if that happens at home, you can just take a pair of scissors and just cut it off too. There's one that's just really sticking out. If you just cannot get it to go back in line, um, like with water, re-rinsing, that kind of thing, you can just cut it off. All right, so now I can go ahead and do the details of my jack-o'-lantern. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little buddy brush again, press back and forth here into the black paint. So I still have that wonderful, nice, thin line there, so that really helps me have precision, makes it a lot easier. So I can go ahead and work in these little triangle eyes here. So we'll do that first, and as many times as I have lines, I do try to let the line edge of this brush work for me. So it just makes it easy. Because if you go to the little bit brush too fast, which is the tiny one, give you a visual, I'm talking about this guy, 
the hand tends to shake a little bit and those lines get a little wiggly. So again, try to use line edge brush as much as you can when you have enough distance on the line to make it easy on you. So we definitely have good distance here on these because I can just make a real simple little dash stroke here. And another thing that makes this a little bit easier too is to actually let all of the orange set up and dry. That also will definitely help make it easier because I'm picking up a lot of wet paint here. So that can be a little bit challenging, but what I'm doing to help alleviate any challenge through that process is as I pick it up, I will just do a quick little wipe off to the side of my plate and that removes that excess orange that I pick up. So it's not too big of a deal. But again, if you're just working leisurely at home, relaxing, you know, just take some time out to relax through the process, let it completely set up and dry, and then painting in the black will definitely be a lot easier. So you won't have to work through this process that I'm doing, which is almost like just kind of scraping off that additional wet orange paint. Oops. All right, see, I accidentally grabbed too much. I caught it in time though, thank goodness. So I wanna get right back to that thin line edge. So once I get the line work done, then I can kind of come in using the side of the brush more, and then that helps do my fill-in work. Now some of these strokes are vertical, and honestly, vertical strokes are not as easy to do to keep your hand steady. So what you can do is you can actually just Rotate the canvas a little bit. So for example, I will turn it this direction for just a moment. And then just go horizontally into those little sections there. make sure y'all can still see it. Okay, good deal. All right, so our little smile is looking beautiful and I'm just barely kind of touching into the corners here, getting some nice little fine details. And then I can go ahead and work into the center of our little triangles. So tiny little delicate strokes. You could actually use your little bit brush in here and then feather out with the bigger brush to help fill it in. But I'm gonna go ahead and just work in with my, this is little buddy, little flat top. Pie. Okay, so now we have some really long lines to do around the sides of the pumpkin here. All right, so you can either use your little buddy brush or you can actually go back to Mama. So where is, I'm gonna just grab one. I've got a bunch of these nearby, so I'm just gonna grab a clean one. So here's Mama, she's also a flat. And so I can go ahead and push back and forth here. Let me give you a visual into the paint back and forth. All right, so this gives me a nice line edge. And so this is a longer line edge, which really helps because this is definitely a longer line edge happening around this pumpkin. 
So believe it or not, this helps keep the hand steadier to do this stroke all the way across and all the way around. So this is very helpful. And as you load up with paint, I do make sure that I keep giving firm pressure back and forth on the brush that keeps that line edge very thin. What happens is as you load up the brush with paint, the bristles can kind of spread out on you. And so that will make for a very thick line. So you have to keep checking your brush and making sure that it's still very thin on the edges. All right, so now I'm gonna make those little defining details through here. And this is optional too, because these little lines are supposed to be a bit more subtle. So if you love the look of, if you used a Sharpie and you love the look of that kind of subtlety sort of peeking through the paint, you can absolutely just kind of leave it just the way it is. Or you can lightly go over it with just a little bit more paint here. But I am using just kind of a light hand to do this step. Yay, so that's beautiful. Okay, so I have a little bit of detail work to come into the bat and then also the leaves, but definitely need a smaller brush for that. So I am going to be using my little bit brush and I need to twirl it into a nice fine point. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that same brush, twirl it into the paint. Nice fine point. And then this will allow me to do the line work around these pretty little leaves here. So again, I do keep twirling it as I load it up to keep that point very fine and tiny. And then this guy, it's already outlined because it's got the hat, but I do a nice little thin line right through the center. And then we have these fun little strokes here, the little line through the center, and little diagonals that kind of come up on each side. And then I will add just a tiny sketch of black around the rows here, kind of help make it pop out over the top. And then we have just a little bit of detail here, a little circular pattern, so I hold the brush, go back to that just like a pencil hole that gives you more control when you get into smaller detailed lines. There's that center line, and then little diagonal lines. And then you can go over the Sharpie lines if you want with another line of paint too. Hello, Keisha. Okay, how are you doing? And that is such a cute pumpkin. <laughs> I'm doing great, and thank you so much. I hope you're doing great, too. All right, so I'm going to show you what it looks like to go over this. A little bit of Sharpie line just to help. So that was our base. And so you can kind of barely touch up over the top with a little bit of paint. So that's optional, or you can just let it be Sharpie, too. You can just take, you know, let it be easy, too. All right, so now I'm gonna paint into this cute little bat. All right, so I'm doing my little thing where I help stabilize my hand, but I also almost did a boo-boo. So, see, I use my pinky to rest on the canvas, but I almost had wet black paint on there, and I almost goobered onto my canvas, so you do have to be careful with that move. But I will still talk about the move. I'm gonna make sure that this is 
dry it is. Okay, so now I'm okay. So I can rest the weight of my hand on my pinky. And that helps stabilize my hand as I go into these really small little curvy areas. Because this cute little bat has got some cute little curves. Details here. Yay! Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. So we're like totally done. <laughs> so awesome. All right. So this is our beautiful little jack-o'-lantern. Very awesome. Super easy to do. Oh, you know what? I could do one little highlight. I forgot about that. Never mind. I'm not quite done. Almost. I have one little accent line I want to do that I'm noticing. I've, I've looked back and I noticed there's like a light gray kind of accent happening on the hat. That's my honey bear sneezing back there. If I say bless you, honey bear. All right, so I've got it mixed up. Now I'm gonna do a little twist into a fine point. And then I'm gonna do just a light little accent. All around the hat. So that's nice, I like that. exciting okay so now I think I'm done <laughs> alrighty so there is our beautiful jack-o-lantern that says boo in a really fun way and everything you need is on our website at tipsyartist.com if you cannot find it for any reason always feel free to message me and I'll send you a direct link to whatever you need uh, so we have lots of different options for this we have just a digital version that you can do at home um, or you can buy our traceable kit with just the line art, or you can get the whole kit if you need all the supplies, like the paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. So lots of different options for whatever you need. But we are so thankful for y'all, and thank you so much for painting with us today. And we will see y'all tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. So y'all have a beautiful Friday, and we'll see you tomorrow.